Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and this is Faithful Rattos. So as you can see from the title of this video, today I am going to be reacting to your guys' cages. I've done this a couple of times and I really like boys. I really like these videos because I like to share with you lots of different amazing cages that are different, that look different that some are aesthetically pleasing like or matching some aren't but still are all enriching and still are all really great and i like showing people a variety of different cages that are really great and good for the rats because it shows you that your cage doesn't have to look a certain way for it to be a good cage and yeah without further ado i am going to get into the cages i've got so the first one is from Phoebe, and I will read you the little blurb that she has attached. Hi Ashley and the boys, this is our SRS 95 with perspex base, middle layer removed, lower shelf removed, and upper shelf turned into a litter box. We use vinegar substrate and back to nature slash breeder select in the litter box. It's currently home to 10 boys aged 6 to 13 months. I've attached a few pictures of its setup in the last couple of months, a couple of which are slightly seasonal, i.e. some Christmas hammocks. You can choose whichever you'd rather or if you need a couple. And then there's a little disclaimer, the, ball, the rat ball on top of the cage has never been used and never will be. I picked it up free on Facebook Marketplace, I was desperate to take it out of circulation and hopefully I'll find something suitable to do with it. Happy to answer any questions, blah blah blah. So I really like this example of a cage because it's not super aesthetically pleasing, everything doesn't match, but it's still a really good cage, provides all the thing that's, things that they need. It's not overpowered by hammocks, which I think is something that people do as a mistake, that there's too much, too many hammocks involved and you really don't need that many hammocks. You only need a couple. And like with this group, that's even the size of it is, one hammock and a couple of other sleeping places, like a basket and I think there's a cocoon at the edge. Just, you know, that's enough. And this is a really great example of using things that aren't necessarily meant for a rat cage in the rat cage. So you've got baskets and a wine rack and a planter and this bamboo edging. So it's a really great cage. I really like it. And Phoebe is a really lovely person and I'm really glad to know her. So great first start. So the second one is from one of my closest friends on Ratstagram, as I like to call it, Hannah. Her Instagram is Hannah's Rats. And this is a really interesting situation that I'd like to show you. So she originally had two double critinations attached together and I'll show you a picture of what it looked like and just how amazing it, it actually is. She's bioactive as well, really deep base, full of soil, lots of climbing opportunities, lots of foraging opportunities, a couple of hammocks, a spudnik, lots of different like nesting materials. As you can see, it's a really great cage. But what happened was Hannah's partner, husband, during when an emergency alarm was going off, couldn't get all of the rats from all the different hiding spots in such a large cage and really had a hard time. And obviously that emergency alarm wasn't a serious thing and it wasn't a huge deal. But if it was, and I know Hannah lives in a place where sometimes weather can cause emergencies, so you have to leave quite quickly. And obviously in the case of a fire, you want to be able and you need to be able to get your pets out safely which is why you should always have like carriers or small cages like handy in case something like that does happen. It wasn't safe. And whilst this quad critination is a really great setup and is absolutely amazing and the amount of space that it gives her boys is incredible, it's not worth sacrificing their safety. And so she's went back down to just a double critination. And as you can see, it's still as exciting. There's still as many opportunities for digging and climbing and all of that sort of stuff, but it's not unsafe like it was before. And she did mention to me that she had to change also like some of the hides. There was one hide that was attached to the back of the cage, like screwed on and she couldn't get, and her partner couldn't get one of the boys out of that. And that was like one of the really unsafe things about the cage which I'm really glad that she mentioned that to me. Um, so I just wanted to include this because it just shows that, yes, the biggest cage can be great, but it's not always the safest option. Like in this situation, you need to be able to make sure that you can get your rats out of a situation or carry the cage out entirely in an emergency. And you don't, you don't want to be in that situation. And I'm really glad that there's a lesson that Hannah can teach us there. 
So I think it's really important to consider that. And then she also showed her cage from October 2019 when she first got a rat, which is bland, very bland. It's fleece, there's like a couple of boxes and one hammock. I actually have this hammock but in the cream colour. Out of the hammocks that you can buy on Amazon, it's actually quite good quality. But yeah, this is just a laugh. This is like a really basic, I don't want to be mean, but bad cage setup. And she included it so I could have a laugh. I'm really appreciative of that. As I mentioned, yes, this cage is amazing. It's naturalistic and it looks great. I, I, I really love her cages. But sometimes you do have to sacrifice something like this quad for something that's safer, that's in an emergency you'd be able to get your rats out of and that's perfectly fine and there is a lot of people online and there's a couple of specific rat groups that make people feel like if their cage isn't absolutely ridiculously sized that they're neglectful etc. I know this group has berated and sent a bunch of hateful people to a rescue for having more than four rats in a double critter nation which is insane but it just goes to show you that everything is nuanced and you don't need a quad critter nation and sometimes it's not even safe so the next cage is from fran so um this is a little message it says hope you're well here's my submission for a rat cage setup video i have a little zoom insurer and currently five dogs call it their palace Misa, Brenda, Margot, Mabel and Lucy Lou. See if you can spot them. I've also attached a picture of the sad cage I had the day I picked up Misa and Brenda. Looking back I'm so ashamed of it. Luckily with some guidance I pretty quickly figured out a much better setup. But I think it's important to show people that we all started somewhere. Generally mortified though. If I showed you a picture of my original cage setup I think I would combust because it was absolutely terrible even worse than this one. So we'll start with the good cage. So this is little zoo ventura winky winky face just i'll just say that so as you can see this is a really great setup very active lots of things to climb there is a couple of hammocks at the top i think i see a little hammock from vocam creations which sadly is no longer making hammocks but is my favorite place to buy hammocks from they're amazing hammocks there is a big nice wheel here and this is just a really great setup and shows, again, that everything doesn't have to be super expensive. It doesn't have to be, like, super aesthetically pleasing. No offence, Fran. But it can be a great cage and look different to other cages that are good and still be a good cage. I like how there's a little girly here escaping. That's really funny to me. But thank you. And also, I'll add in the picture here of your original cage thank you for sharing it thanks for being open and willing to sort of show how your act hair improved i'll just point out a few things about this that like is the reason why it's bad so one i don't see very much loose substrate and what i do see looks to be back to nature which is a litter not a substrate then there's for two little rats there's a hammock a double hammock a spudnik and a hanging basket that's far too many places they only really need like one two maybe if it's different the plastic shelf is still in which is a pea magnet there's a food bowl and rats don't need a full food bowl the floor is covered with like tunnels and things which tunnels can be great for rats but they can be really difficult to clean and also they need space to dig on the ground which this doesn't give them and if i'm not mistaken that little like wooden looking thing is actually one of those things that's made out of sawdust and honey compacted that's really dangerous because it encourages them to eat and swallow the sawdust rather than just like chew on wood like they would normally that is a little overview of why this cage isn't very good the size of the cage isn't bad i think it's suitable for up to like four rats it's an okay cage in itself but the setup is so par and thank you very much for sharing it with us this is from rune this is a double quarter nation and five rats live in it so great bioactive base i see there again there is lots of climbing opportunities lots of interesting textures and things going on i really like this little like snow drip that's on that little shelf but here's some little critiques i would have the first thing being there is a lot of hammocks there is 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hammocks, nine hammocks I can see. And that is a lot of hammocks. There is things that you can switch this out for to be a little bit more enriching and provide more of a variety for your rats. The other thing is I would consider removing this middle shelf. It's not really necessary and if you take it out you can provide a lot more climbing space and a much more active layout which can be really helpful for rats to keep their agility up and to keep at a healthy weight and things like that. But that being said, it is a really great cage. They have an amazing amount of bedding, which is the bioactive, which is my dream. Watch this space. And yeah, so this is a really nice cage and it aesthetically it looks great. But I would just say maybe kit down to like two or three hammocks and mix things up a bit with different things to climb on and such. This is little Ezio here. Next, let's move on to the next cage. So this one doesn't have a name. So this is what they said. Here is my cage submission for your upcoming reaction video. I know it's not the best, but I'm trying to pr improve every day. Any advice would be very much welcome. There are a lot of things I'd love to approve, but I can only do it slowly for now. I own a Marble 100 with five mischievous boys living in it. I intend to add, not add any more than five at any time due to the cage being on the smaller side. Hopefully it's not too bad. And then it's just a little note, a little thing underneath it that says this is their newest setup that they did last week. So one thing I'd like to say is I really enjoy showing some of the smaller suitable cages and the Mamba 100 is one of those cages. So let's have a look. So the first thing that I would critique on is that you have much more space to be able to give a deeper layer of bedding, which is really great for rats. So I would consider filling that little tray up a lot more. You don't have like an overpowering of hammocks, but I still might consider only having that triple hammock that you have and taking away some of the other ones. I would add maybe more ropes and things to climb on, maybe like a tie holder, things like that. But it's not a bad setup and it goes to show that these smaller, smaller cages can be a really great setup and being open to suggestions and improvement is all anyone can ask. And I'm really excited to see what cage looks like in the future. Then the next one is from Rachel. And she says, so this is my partner's current design for Nimbler and Gizmo. They are, they are two rescues. Whilst they love free and active adventures, they love their home to feel safe. So they have lots of hiding places that are also nice and cosy. They're both ace climbers, so we don't give them lots of ropes and things. Weirdly, they don't like a dig box in their cage, but one loves it during free roam. I've recently purchased them a tic tac wheel just waiting for cage clean day to pop it in and see what the boys think. Featured in the pics is Gizmo who thinks the phone is always about him. It usually is. My boys think the same thing too. They are currently in half little zoo insurer. Please be feel not to use it if the standard's not good enough. So first of all, Gizmo is very cute. Now let's look at the picture that you sent. So this is really great, lots of nice loose substrate, lots of places to hide, but not too many hammocks taking up the place. I would consider though, just going down to perhaps one hammock, and then obviously they've got a, a little hide tunnel at the bottom, and they've got a spudnik and a tube. I would say you can afford to add a little bit more substrate and to improve this, to add a perspex tray, so you can give them more substrate to dig in which is really important for them and you mentioned they don't really like to dig inside the cage but the amount of substrate that you've given them isn't as much as you could so that might help them dig more but other than that it's really great i really like these tubes with the sisal rope on the outside it's very aesthetically pleasing to me and i really hope i can get one of them one day i think rustic ratties made them i would also take away the little ladders between the shelves i don't think that's necessary for them. But yeah, all in all, nice setup and thanks for sending it in. Then this one is Jess. This is Jess's rat on Instagram. She is great. This is her cage. I think there's about 15 or so does that live in this double cage with an amazing wheel. Oh, that's one thing I, I forgot to mention with the other cage. Wheels aren't 100% necessary with rats. A lot of rats will love them and will use them all the time. My boys love their wheel. But if you have to sacrifice 
things like ample climbing space for a wheel. I don't think it's necessary and not every single rat would like to use them. But again, let's go back to her setup. There's lots of great branches and ropes of different thickness and sizes. And there's a couple of hammocks. I really like that cube rainbow hammock. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, this is great. And just look how deep that bedding is. I can imagine that they absolutely love digging. And as you can see, there's a couple of under the bedding hides, which will start burrows and things like that. And I know that Jess uses a substrate that is really great for making tunnels. It's called Carl, Carl, Carl Bellingham, something like that. It's only really available in Scotland and the north of England, but it's a really great substrate. I'm just going to show you Ezio here. He's so cute. Ow! Ezio! That wasn't very nice. I wanted to boop. Not a nibble. He didn't actually bite me. He just thought I was a treat. That wasn't very nice. That wasn't very nice. Ezio. That wasn't very nice. Really love Jess's cages always. But yeah, this is a really nice double layout with really great enrichment and such deep bedding, which I love. And I think this is the last one. This is another Little Zoo Ventura, which I can't say complaining about seeing them all. This is the little blurb that she's written. Hi, Ashley. This is my cage for my 11 girls and one neutered male in the Little Zoo Ventura. I know there's a lot for the cage size, but I wouldn't have any more than seven or eight in there. But I currently have three really, three really old rats and two other very lazy rats that don't tend to leave their beds unless there's good food on offer and free room. We'll get a perspex basin soon, hopefully, as well as a bioactive dig box for one of the ledges. Any tips would be graciously appreciated. Love your videos and all, all the means. Why is your name fun? Thank you. I love it. So this cage is great. As you mentioned, having a perspex will just make it act. Having a perspex tray will just mean that you can give them more bedding, which is just more enriching for them. It's a really nice active layout and a good use of the space. There isn't too many hides and such. I don't think really having eight is pushing it at all. Oh, sorry. I don't think having 12 is pushing it at all. I think the, the 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 cage maximum is probably like 14 rats in this. It's a really great cage and I don't think you should worry about that at all. Yeah, I think it's really great. I don't really have anything other to say than the Perspex, as you mentioned, would be really great. And yeah, it's a really nice active layout and also shows that use of things that aren't necessarily rat things like those Ikea tie holders, which have a joke all on us, honestly. And yeah, a really great cage and thank you for sending it in. So that is the last cage submission that I was sent. I really enjoy showing these cages to you and just chatting about cages coming up for me, that is a real exciting cage situation happening, which I may just put up, put up a picture that it is a clue as to what's happening. I'm so super excited about it. Something that I've been actually wanting to do for a very, very long time. And yeah, so that being said, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, I have two others like it that you can watch. You can subscribe and like and comment, all those good stuff. I would like to see what you think of these cages. And if you have any tips and advice for the people and these cages. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Me and Mr. Nippy over here. Um, I'm going to say goodbye. Say bye, Ezio. Bye. Bye. <laughs>